It's time for Rounding the Bases with Dino and Barks on 1460 CJOI. Well, off the top, it was a nice slow pitch scoring Kitchener. <laughs> well, we were definitely, uh, definitely had a... Well, off the top, it was a nice slow pitch scoring Kitchener. <laughs> well, we were definitely, uh, definitely had a good, uh, good day offensively. We had five home runs, and, and it seemed like every out we had was loud. Uh, it was fun to watch. It's always good to be on that side of it. Uh, but uh, but we had a, we had an outstanding game. And our pitchers did a great job. Of course, you've got another Blue Jay on the on the roster now. Tell us about. Him. Well, Andrew Case. He came in, made his uh, intercounty debut. Andrew was a guy who was a, a Blue Jay farmhand and, and got up to AAA. Was a closer, AAA, AA. Uh, pitched a lot in uh, spring training games with the Blue Jays. Uh, you know, he faced guys like Giancarlo Stanton and Aaron Judge with the Yankees. No, they're not bad. They're not bad. Uh, he pitched for the World Baseball Classic team, uh, and uh, here's a guy that just attacks the strike zone, throws, you know, in the 93, 94 range, uh, and is a good guy. Moved here with his family from out east uh, for the season, and uh, and loves it here. And I think our fans are going to really embrace him. I saw that you got him from Quebec, and I know I did a couple. I have some sports guys for that league uh, out in Ottawa because Ottawa was in the league too. Right. Compare that to the Intercounty League. Is it similar, or, I think or, or is Intercounty better? You know what? I think I think it's similar. I think there's some teams in the Intercounty that could that could really do well in that league. Okay. Um, I think the consistency of pitching, top to bottom, is probably better there. But then I will put Claudio Custodio, Dario Alvarez, uh, Andrew Case, you know, Brandon Dees. I'll put them up against any pitchers that they have over there. So. Um, I, I, I see guys that struggle in this league, go that league, and, and thrive. So I think top to bottom, uh, I think I think there's a lot of teams, I, I, and I, I'll face any team in that league with a team that we have potentially when everybody's healthy. Speaking of healthy, uh, tomorrow you got a game, and uh, are they all healthy or not? Well, you know we're facing London, uh, defending champs. You know they're in first place right now. They beat us three times. Two of them, actually, all three games have been close. Um, and we're missing some guys. You know, we have uh, Dalton, uh, one of his close friends, is getting married. Uh, Sean Riley's a firefighter, so it's his day to work. And uh, we have three guys that are injured uh, that we hope to get back soon. So, you know, but the thing is, this is this is why we're so excited about the team we built. We have great depth, and uh, and we're going to compete. And, again, when Claudio's on the mound and you have Deans and, and uh, Case at the back end, you always have a chance to win. Exactly. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, everybody's saying today that um – by looking at the league, looking at the standings right now, you guys are in good shape, but you want to get better. Absolutely. You know, you, you want to get in the top three spots that have home field advantage in the playoffs. First round is best of five. So you want to you want to put yourself in a position where, you know, you, you lose one game, a pitcher gets hot. It's not always the best team that wins. It's the best team, the team that's playing the best at, uh, at that stage of the year. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that we're playing better every day and, and get to that point where we have home field advantage because, Again, at, well, we're, we're tough to beat. I think we've only lost one game at home. So, sorry, two games at home. So I think we're, uh, you know, we, we want to make sure we're in that position. Home field advantage is always good, especially in a playoff series. Oh, absolutely. And again, we, we've been drawing well. Our fans are, are great. You know, we have the best PA announcers in the league. So we, uh, you know, we're really excited about the potential of having home, extra home games. And, of course, uh, you know, the people come out, and I saw it on Canada Day. Six deep with lawn chairs down the foul lines. That was amazing. I t told friends of mine in Toronto and in Calgary, you know, check this out because it is it is good quality ball, and the fans are loyal. They're, they're loyal fans. We have great fans. Um, you know, we, we're, they're getting louder and louder, which is great. The players love when the fans get into it. So if you're coming to the game, make sure you're cheering on, on your guys. Um, I think the other thing, too, is without fences around the foul territory, you feel like you're part of the game. You feel like you're right there. There's no separation between No barrier. Fans. No barrier. Yeah. So the atmosphere is great, and it's just such a, a cool feeling, and you don't get that in any other stadium in the league. No, and, I, you know, and I've said this before to other people. Um, Hastings reminds me of some of the early Florida spring training ballparks when I started back in 85 with the Jays. You know, you go down to, they're not the mega complexes like they are today. Like, even Grant Field in the Dean was like Hastings Stadium at one time. Oh, absolutely. And that's, again, that's what's so great about uh, parks like that is you feel like you're part of it. They're, the players are very accessible. Uh, not always a great thing. But, um, <laughs> but you had guys like, uh, you know, Dalton walking by you and, 
you know, a young kid will stick his hand out and shake his hand his other way by. And you're right on top of the action. So I think it's a cool feeling. Then you see all the kids running around in the back. Well, and open I area. noticed, too, like a lot of families come out. Yeah, it's and great. the kids run the bases like two hundred kids running the bases on Canada. Like, and, and we we love that. We love that, and it's uh, you know because the, the thing is we, we're getting more and more involved with Guelph Minor Baseball. They do such a great job, and we want to be that that way. We want to give an opportunity for kids to aspire to be something uh, in baseball. So your careers, if you don't get a, a pro opportunity or college opportunity, you know you can play competitive baseball at a high level if you're if you're good enough to play. So. We want to give that kind of image, and, and these guys represent our city, and, and you know we're, we're very excited about that. We're very proud of wearing Guelph on our jerseys. Thanks for this, and they got a couple of W's. All right, thanks again, Parks.
Good evening, baseball fans. We have a marquee matchup for you coming from Hastings Stadium on another Saturday night and another beautiful night for baseball as the Gulf Royals welcome the London Majors to town in a battle of two of the three top teams in the IBL, and it's ace on ace tonight. Scott Fraser with you, joined by Neil Srivasa, who is riding shotgun. Neil, Claudio Custodio against Owen Boone is the game within the game tonight. You couldn't ask for a better matchup and on a Saturday night, and so hopefully a lot of people, judging by the parking lot here and even the stands so far, you're going to definitely need the shoehorns out here to find yourself a seat unless you brought a lawn chair. And as the Royals get set to take the field, we will touch back on their most recent victory in Kitchener on Thursday night. A huge, huge win. The bats came alive beating the Panthers by a large margin. And all Malik Cullimore did in that game was go five for five with two home runs and a double and eight RBI in the win. Guelph now two and a half games back of Wellen for top spot in the IBL. And it looks like it's gonna be a three pony race between those Jackfish, the Royals and the Majors who are in town tonight. Home field is definitely a huge advantage as you get to the playoffs in the IBL as well. So. You know, all three are definitely jostling for position, but they definitely, you know, you wouldn't mind the extra home gates the further you go in the playoffs as well. Yeah, and absolutely, and it's it starts right now with that guy in the mound who's getting loose, Claudio Custodio. He has been this league's, far and away, this league's best pitcher so far this season. Well over 100 strikeouts and has just been Mr. Everything. Hasn't really seen too many more opportunities at the dish since earlier in the season, but has been getting it done on the mound after kind of playing double duty a few games as a designated hitter and starting pitcher. Dino Romello has since kind of dialed it back and kept him on the mound more so than perhaps maybe slide him in there for a pinch hitting spot when needed, but don't think we'll see him as an everyday DH or even a common DH for this team as obviously health and fatigue are, or lack of fatigue are priority number one. Brandon LaRue, who made his return to the lineup on Thursday night, had two doubles. He will be back in the lineup in the infield tonight for the Royals. And Kyle Cush is actually playing third base with Jeff McLeod, designated hitter, and J.D. Williams, as well as Ethan Hammond to round out the outfield. And Austin Wilkie, the center fielder for London, will lead it off for the majors as we are about set to get going here. Wilkie we'll batting 298 on the season so far. Looking to get the majors off on the right foot here. First pitch misses outside for ball one, which is an uncommon theme for Claudio, who has been first pitch strike almost automatically all season long, so doesn't get the call on that one. We'll go back to the well here, and Wilkie swings at that one and chops it foul. And as per usual, not a cloud in the sky here on a Saturday night, so Ethan Hammond... Out there in left field, we'll be battling the sun to get this game going until at least it begins to set. Phil Whelan will be the left fielder for the majors and will have that task on his shoulders in the bottom half of the inning. Wilkie chops another one foul behind home plate. Count is now one and two. Custodio likes to get ahead and stay ahead and that's exactly what he did against Toronto Saturday on Sunday as well, just unfortunately Came up with a no decision, went eight innings, 18 strikeouts, 144 <laughs> pitches. Deserved a better fate, that's for sure. And As gets this away. night started off on the right foot with a strikeout on Wilkie. One down here, quickly as Jacob Newton makes his way to the plate. Newton gets set a righty on lefty matchup here, so favorable in Newton's corner. Hitting over 300, well over 300 is the second baseman. Swings the first one he sees. Pops it up to left field, Hammond underneath it. Makes the catch in the sun for out number two. Hammond doesn't look like he's got sunglasses on out there either, so you know, he's just doing it all with his eyes. And had little trouble tracking that one, so kudos to Hammond, who made it look easy. And now Cleveland Brownlee heading to the plate. In the front pouch. 
RBI baseball. Yep. Brownlee, the designated hitter in the three hole here. Winning the fashion award already without the batting gloves. And that one finds the zone for strike number one. Brownlee, a power hitter and can really turn on a ball quickly if he gets a hold of it. So Claudio will obviously have that in the back of his mind and keep it away from the hot spots in the zone for Brownlee as he chops that one foul for strike number two. Over the years, Brownlee's made this place his second launching pad. Probably only third behind Christy Pitts as far as probably where he's hit most of his home runs over his career. Surprisingly not a lot in Kitchener. A storied hitter, and that is it's a bit of a head scratcher as Jack Couch Stadium is a hitter's ballpark and Brownlee down on strikes and Claudio one, two, three, through the top of the first we are off to the bottom. We go. Back to Hastings Stadium, no score halfway through the first inning. J.D. Williams, Connor Morrow, and Ethan Hammond do up for the Royals. And Williams has found a real, real comfy spot leading off in this lineup and has been very effective anywhere he's been placed. But again, a guy who knows how to get on base and get on base quickly and then really has the foot speed to advance himself almost seamlessly. Boone's first pitch of the game misses for ball number one. Owen Boone was nightmare fuel for the Royals earlier in the season. <laughs> really, really making their life a living hell back in June, or in May rather, excuse me, as that one misses as well. And Boone's with a 268 ERA, 30, 30, sorry, 43.2 innings pitched, 57 strikeouts. That's third in the league. Of course, there's Claudio Custodio, the next guy, and then there's Boone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Claudio Custodio and everyone else essentially so far this season as Williams fouls that one straight behind home plate. Just missed it. Count now two and one as he steps out, and Boone will look for a perhaps replacement ball and does get it, and the home plate umpire happy to... Hang on to that one. So two and one the count as Williams set to go as Boone is also now ready to go here. Two and one the count. As mentioned, that sun high in left field and Williams pops that one up down the first baseline and out of play to even the count at two and two. Phil Whelan out there following the lead of Ethan Hammond with no sunglasses and 
that may come back to haunt some of these guys because that sun is shining bright out in left field. That definitely right is, and Hammond's gotten used to it over the his time here, but somebody like Whalen out there is going to have a hard time tracking it, at least for the couple first couple innings. We've seen it happen before. And you can see him now shading his eyes over his hat, so if Williams is able to get one in the air out there, it could be trouble. That one inside runs the count full. The payoff pitch from Boone. Gets JD looking. Strike out number one for Owen Boone. And that brings up Connor Morrow, who went deep in that win against Kitchener and scored five runs. Found himself aboard by way of base on balls four separate times in the win. So his on base percentage has just gone through the ceiling and then some of late. And he has finally seemingly settled in and has found his rhythm here as a Royal after a bit of a snake bitten start. One gone here, Morrow swings at the first pitch he sees and fouls it off. Morrow got the average up to 347. A slow start for him, but now as he's got the reps going and everything else, the bat has definitely come alive and He's definitely hitting the baseball a lot louder than he was earlier in the season. Yeah, and 347, not too shabby. And as mentioned, Neil, a slow start, but through no fault of his own, was hitting balls pretty decently well, but just seemed to find infielders or outfielders' gloves and just really not getting any luck whatsoever. The test of time has evened out that luck, and Connor Morrow is reaping the benefits these days. And is even in the count at one and one with one down here. Boone delivers. Morrow swings and pulls it foul. Hammond do up next and Collymore batting cleanup. We'll get more about Malik Collymore's performance on Thursday night in a moment. But for now, Morrow looking to stay alive here. One and two. And Owen Boone is this kind of pitcher that can really just get in a rhythm and not look back here, so ready to go again. Morrow fights it off, and that is fouled off of the catcher's helmet. Robert Mullen. Where's that one? See, appears to be no worse for where it might have bounced and then hit the helmet. But still, not a comfortable feeling to take one off the chin, especially early in the game. So we do it again. The one to the outfield in a bit of a shift from center to left, or to right rather. There's a big gap between left and center. Let's see if Morrow can find it. That one poked right to the second baseman. Now a hot shot, can't handle it. Hammond, Morrow rather. Throw is in time as Morrow got on his horse, but just a, maybe a half step late for out number two. Ethan Hammond now back to the plate. He has been fantastic. He went deep in the game against Kitchener as well. We'll be saying that a lot tonight. That, that score was off the charts and a 23-3 win. Obviously, you're going to see or hear about a lot of performances at the dish. And Hammond, no different in that game. No question it was. It was just nice to see him finally get one over the fence. He's come so close so many times this season. And another guy who's been up and down the lineup for Dino Rommel and has been effective everywhere, and like you said, nice to see him rewarded with that long shot on Thursday as he looks at strike number one. Well over 1,800 fans here at Hastings Stadium with some seats still left to be filled as Hammond flares one to right field, and that's in there for a base hit. Hammond getting to Boone in the bottom of the first. That is more important than words can explain because if Boone starts to get his rhythm, it might be lights out for the Royals. And of all the guys in the lineup tonight that you'd want up next, here he is. Malik Collymore, hotter than a pistol of late. Five for five on Thursday night. Two home runs, eight RBIs and a double. And as Neil mentioned before the broadcast, just a triple short of the cycle, but... 
elected to go for the second long shot instead. Swings at the first one he sees and misses strike one. Collins Lowen's upped his average about 20 points on Friday or Thursday nights. Contents going five for five, like you mentioned. Up to 322 on the year now. That is a fantastic way to get that average well above, safely above 300 now. Collie Moore chases one out of the zone and Hammond had to get back real quick as that throw down from Mullen was right on point and on time. But Hammond beat it back to first base. He is safe. The count 0-2, two, two gone. And right now for Collie Moore, after all that confidence coming in from Thursday, just needs to tighten up, maybe choke up and protect the zone here. Swings and misses a three-pitch strikeout for Owen Boone. We are through one inning here at Hastings Stadium. No score. Robert Mullen, Starling Joseph, and Gibson Kremensky do up next in the top half of the second. Top of the second, back to Hastings Stadium. No score. Robert Mullen to get things going here for the majors who will be looking to get to Claudio Custodio for the first time this evening. As Neil mentioned, Claudio has been far and away this league's MVP pitcher, maybe MVP all-around player as that is a first pitch strike from Claudio to get the second inning underway. Custodio third in the league in, in wins, second in the ERA, first in strikeouts. Of course, London brought both Ho Jose Harias and Owen Boone on the bus tonight. Manager Roop Chandler Jack wasn't Owen. sure which one to start here tonight, so I guess he had a coin toss and Owen Boone won. So that means Harias, Harias will get the Well and Jackfish tomorrow night. Yeah, and the task doesn't get any less tall for the majors who are in the thick of things in the top of the IBL, but playing Toronto last night, playing Guelph tonight, and playing well in tomorrow, it's a heck of a three and three. It can be. At least they have two on their two at home rather than have to go on the road or anyways, but still. We tripped up the 401 to the Royal City tonight. As Mullen waves at that one to say goodbye, he's down on strikes for out number one. And now Starling Joseph, the right fielder back to the plate, or up to the plate for the first time this evening. The right fielder number seven, Starling Joseph. Joseph hitting well over 330 and has been 
a fantastic part of this lineup for the London Majors, who, much like the Royals, have had no problems hitting the baseball. Joseph Dangerous at the plate. Six home runs so far as he gets this one into right field for a single here. First pitch swinging and the first base runner aboard for the Majors in this ball game. Through a third of the top of the second here. And Joseph, who can really fly out there at first with one gone. And will be followed by third Gibson base, Kremensky. 19, Gibson Kremensky. The third baseman coming to the plate, and again, as a lefty, has a real advantage here. But with that sun still in the eyes of Ethan Hammond, and even Connor Morrow, who's playing short, as Brandon LaRue is that second. Kyle Cush at third. Darius Barless, we haven't mentioned yet, is the first baseman this evening. No Justin and Terrasano, no Sean Riley, no Josh Garton tonight. Strike one from Claudio. Of course, Riley working this weekend is his weekend shift. And, of course, Dalton Pompey out of the lineup as well. He's at a wedding tonight, so I hope he's having, enjoying the festivities and got us open on YouTube or something this evening and checking in on the boys. That is the nature of the beast with summer ball. It's also wedding season. As Claudio throws over to check Joseph, and Joseph read it all the way and was back in time. And bang, bang again. Joseph... Who's actually kind of on his, had his momentum on his front foot to get towards second there as he hadn't quite set. We'll see if Claudio goes back to it for a third straight time. And Joseph takes off. The hit and run was on, but that one fouled off by Kremensky. Joseph had second base with ease if that ball stayed fair, rather. Kremensky into action tonight, 18 for 58. A 310 average, no home runs, nine RBIs, so, so he's doing his job in the lower part of the order. Kremensky hitting sixth tonight, the third baseman, who will be followed by Keith Candle and Dan Perrier if we get that far. That one misses for ball number one. And as mentioned, Joseph at first base looking very, very, very ready to take second yet again. Standing on the base for the moment, but will get his lead. Barless keeps his foot on the bag. And watch for Joseph to run here. That one inside, but finds the part of the plate that is a strike. Another strikeout for Claudio Custodio. That one came back in on Kremensky to sit him down. And that brings up Keith Candle. Candell got a little spurt of power this year. I don't know what's in the water in London, but he's got three home runs this year. Usually Candell usually hits the gaps, usually hits everything else, but he's got three home runs, and they've been legitimate shots. They haven't been any wall scrapers at all. Like, I always joke with Keith on the social media. We knew him from when he was here with the Royals and everything else. He was with the Burlington Bandits as well. But he found a home in London, and he's there, there he's been so far, and he got his ring last year like Cleveland Brownlee did. That one chopped tomorrow at short on to Barless at first for out number three. So the Royals bend but don't break halfway through to Noah Roberts, Jeff McLeod, and Darius Barless do up in the bottom half of the inning.
home half of the second inning. Noah Roberts, the catcher, to lead it off. And the normal designated hitter, Sean Riley, sitting at station 415 for Toronto Fire Sentence. His well wishes to his teammates in this crowd. So a little extra boost from the home run king of the IBL here to get this game going. And maybe Roberts can find a way to get one in. Strike one, thrown from Owen Boone to get the bottom half of the second underway. Well, to this point, the game, the game is definitely level to the billing. The pitchers are right in the strike zone, and umpires are having a, a nice time back there. And Roberts swings and misses at strike two. The trick to Boone is you got to get to him early. The longer he gets in this game, once he gets his feet settled in and everything else, it's just all second nature for him. Yeah, just doesn't need to overswing checks and lays off that one. Ball one. And hopefully station 415 can Will Roberts aboard here. The one two delivered from Boone, swung on and missed. Strike number three. Here comes tonight's designated hitter and perhaps the best storyteller in the IBL. Jeff McLeod. Jeff McLeod. McLeod in and out of the lineup of late and was mentioning that he's been working on his swing and changing it and that goes back to that game where he saw about nine straight balls and decided to swing at the ninth one. Didn't get much to hit that day so you'll know he'll be looking to swing and swing often here tonight. Boone delivers. More McLeod swings and chops one up the gap. That'll be a base hit. McLeod wasting no time to get aboard here. And that brings up tonight's first baseman, Darius Barless, who after Terrasano went down with that injury a few weeks ago on Canada Day. You know, Barless has done everything they've asked him to do so far as a first baseman and just playing that role while the Justin and Terrasano recovers from the quad injury. He's batting 242 and he's been Definitely in the thick of things as far as the offense goes. Yeah, it seems that he's really turned a corner, so to speak, since coming in to cover at first base. And his confidence has just kind of climbed and climbed and climbed at the plate. That one misses for ball one. And the thing I like about, I like most about Barlis is he's not afraid to sit there in that box and make a pitcher work. You're going to see a lot of full counts with him. He's going to stay in the box. He's going to foul things off. Just really be a pain in the butt. And yeah, with Barlow says the lefty, the dugout gets a clean view as to what Boone is delivering, and he lays off that one as mentioned. 2 0, Barlow's ahead of Boone here. Got a McLeod big ball on the right side if you can get it past McLeod here, or around McLeod, anyways. Boone waits, checks, delivers. That one foul into the parking lot. And that might be the first wooden shield of the season as that one had a high hope of landing right on the windshield. Two and one the count now. McLeod. Pretty stationary, about a foot and a half off of first base. That one comes inside and misses for ball three. And as you mentioned, Neil, Barless not afraid to let that bat stay on his shoulder and see what Boone can do and make him throw strikes and is doing that exactly right now. One bounces for ball four, and Darius is aboard. McLeod will advance 90 feet as well as Kyle Cush makes his way to the plate. Cush playing third base tonight, and again, with that injury-riddled infield, especially with Justin and Terrasano out, Cush has been a utility man playing second, short, third, first tonight. It is the hot corner for number five, and will look to make an impact here with McLeod in scoring position, just one gone. Barless at first, he can move as well. So if Cush can get one deep into that gap between right and center, Royals could score one or maybe two. Cush 
lays off strike number one, or ball number one, excuse me. They went for the appeal, uh, and Mike Guthrow at third base said, no, he did not go around here, so. A good eye from the umpires as that looked like it was borderline one way or the other, but they're right on top of it. And Kush ahead in the count, 1-0. and oh. Boone checks McLeod, no one covering second at the moment. That one in there for a strike. Definitely getting the inside call tonight, so you got to put that one in the back pocket here if you're the catchers. Work it outside a little bit, and then, you know, drop it back in here. You're probably going to get the call. The 1-1. One, one. Delivered. Cush swings and misses, and he wanted that one. It's not often a, uh, a catcher leads the league in hitting, but that's what Robert Mullen's doing for the majors as well. So he's doing it defensively and doing it with a stick. Brando LaRue will follow Cush as the number nine hitter tonight, and he can definitely make a difference even if Cush is unable to advance the runners. That one bounces to even the count at deuces. First baseman now behind Barless at first, so Major's looking to can keep everything in front of them, see if they can't turn the double play up the middle here. Yeah, and get themselves out of this one, as this is by far the biggest threat they've faced in this game. Cush lays off, runs the count full. And if they can find a way to make Owen Boone run his pitch count up early in this game, it's only signs of good things for the latter stages of the ball game for the Royals. So this next pitch, without stating the obvious too much, is huge. Payoff from Boone. Swung on and chopped up the... It gets the Hastings hop. A... Hastings hop and McLeod play it. The play is safe. Both Cush and Barless advance. That is a huge moment in this ball game. Jeff McLeod opens the scoring with a slide. And Brando LaRue with first base open, one gone. And Darius Barless, 90 feet from home, will look to double the Royals' lead here. The Royals just seem to play better when they score first. And hopefully that's just an indication of what's going to happen tonight as the infield comes in to knock this one down with LaRue up now. Yeah, Brando can poke one or flare one just to shallow anywhere in the outfield. That'll score maybe both runners now. Brando swings and misses in the first one he sees for strike one. Back to the top of the order, if we get any further than this, J.D. Williams on deck. The 0-1 gets away off from the, the glove of Mullen, and that will score Barless with ease. Kush to third, and the pitch. Royals lead 2-0. A bit of a miscue behind home plate there from Mullen and off the heel of his glove and behind home plate. And that is an RBI for Brandon LaRue. <laughs> so now Cush at third, Guelph with two across already. The count one and one. Williams do up next. LaRue swings and pokes one to left field and in left the sun. can't even see that ball. LaRue's going to get an extra base here as Whalen could not see that one off the bat. Phil Whalen completely lost that. That was a textbook hit from Brando LaRue. You couldn't ask for anything else from the young infielder. And now all of a sudden the Royals are rolling. Three nothing. One gone here in the bottom of the second.
Malone and Boone having a conversation out there, just probably trying to calm down his pitcher a little bit. As J.D. Williams will be the batter. Center fielder number nine, J.D. Williams. Back to the top of the order, J.D. Williams, who went down on strikes to start this game off for the Royals. And now with LaRue 180 feet away from home and just one gone, Williams. No stranger to this situation and knows exactly what he needs to do. Takes one high and inside for ball number one. Well, this would be a little smarter than the last time up the plate. He got, went down looking on a strikeout. Thought the ball was outside, but the plate umpire gave the call to, to Boone in the first. 2-0. Oh. Interesting to see how LaRue gets his second secondary here. Boone doesn't look like he's paying any attention to him. Candell's playing definitely more towards third here. And Williams waves at that one and misses as it skated from inside the zone to outside the zone. The count now two and one. And as Neil mentioned, both Candell and Krasminski playing well off the bag, so LaRue could have a free pass to third row as Boone checks and checks again. <laughs> that one fouled off by JD, but will go for strike number two, so the count even at two and two. And Connor Morrow due up next as he loosens up in the on-deck circle. LaRue takes off for third. Williams pokes one in and it gets underneath the glove of Kremensky. And Brando is on his way home. Three nothing. JD, JD with that a one, one well out. Extra base. RBI double to extend the Royals lead to four. And Connor Morrow on his way to the plate again. He will manage to root Chander Dat coming out to have a chat with Mr. Boone here as Robert Mullen making his way out as well. Now Morrow heel turned real quick and it was quite apparent that there will be a meeting on the mound here for the majors. And why not after a four run outburst here from the Royals after we were just plugging along with three up three down baseball for the most part. And now all of a sudden Guelph is blowing this one not quite wide open yet, but the doors are starting to come off and the wheels perhaps starting to fall off for the majors. They scored it as Williams with the double. Kremensky at third base heard footsteps, and I think he tried to get out of the way more, more than around the ball anyways. And yeah. As LaRue was racing to third as well. It's a lot tougher than it looks when you can hear LaRue coming, trying to keep your eye on the ball and can feel that presence coming towards you at full speed. It's a lot going on out there at the hot corner, and that's why it has its name. As Connor Morrow, back to the plate now, he's 0 for 1. J.D. Williams at second, looking to continue this outburst from Guelph in the bottom half of the second as Morrow shows butt and pulls back for ball number one. Hammond loosening up in the on-deck circle, likely to get another chance up here in the bottom half of the second. First base open, unlikely that we see a double play. The 1 0. Morrow slices it foul and just a wee bit late as Connor on that one. The crowd is still filling in. Look at down the lines now. You can't see anything but players and bodies down there. Fans, players, and bodies, absolutely both. The first and third baseline is absolutely full. This has to be the biggest crowd we've had at Hastings so far this season. Growing to over 2,100 according to the box office. That one in there for strike two. And what a time to be here at Hastings Stadium as the Royals have found a way to score four runs here with just one gone in the bottom of the second. And Connor Morrow behind in the count, one and two. That mound visit seems to have worked for Boone, who seemed to 
refocus and find the zone yet again. Williams with a generous lead at second. Morrow checks that one, foul. <laughs> Count remains up one and two. Moons up to 43 pitches here and we're only in the second inning, so gonna see that bullpen in the majors get a little bit of a workout tonight. They got a workout last night as well. Which could just be wide grins for all the Royals hitters and Dino Rommel as this game wears on. The one two from Boone, Williams checked over at second and that one gets away from Candell, but not enough for JD to get back up and take third. That was about as clear cut of a throw over as you would see as Williams was inching closer and closer to third and Candell got on his horse to get back to cover the base. Unfortunately, unable to come back down with the ball and Williams remains safe. One and two, one gone. And again, watch Candell and Williams who <laughs> almost in unison back there. <laughs> Hopping around and that one low for ball two. And the hands of Hastings Stadium come together. Williams at second, the count two and two here. Morrow will be followed by Ethan Hammond. Boone sets, checks, delivers. Inside full count. Be interesting to see if they put the hit and run on again here with the full count, or I think I'll let Morrow swing away here. I think with the way Connor's been making contact with the baseball of late, I think it's all his decision and his decision alone here. Williams off to an even bigger lead at second now as he goes on the pitch. And, and Morrow, Morrow laces one to left. That one caught, and Williams will be out on the tag up. A Seven double play ball. Goes to double play. <laughs> Blame it on me for maybe jinxing it. That one ends the inning in quick fashion, but not before the Royals bring four home and have a four-run lead. We are off to the top of the third. Number 15, Dan Perrier. We are back here for the top 
half of the third inning. Dan Perrier to lead it off for the majors who have a four run deficit to erase as Claudio misses for ball number one. Well, if you're the majors, you know Claudio's gonna be around the strike zone on that first pitch, so nine, ten, it's on the time. Nine times out of ten, you're going to probably take a swing at that. And Perrier laid off the first one, but also laid off the second one to even the count at one and one. Yeah, it's not a bad school of thought, Neil, is the fact that you know Claudia likes to throw first pitch strikes, and why not swing away at it? As that one misses for a ball. Checking the out-of-town scoreboard. The Buried Baycats have a six-run inning. Now leading that one 7-1 in the bottom of the third against the Kitchener Panthers, who have been giving up a lot of runs this week. And as you mentioned, between innings, it's been a long week for the Panthers, and not in a good way as Claudio finds the zone for strike two, and that one misses to run the count full. And a few fans here at Hastings Stadium disagree with a missed strike call, but nonetheless, the count is full, three and two. Perrier against Custodio. Perrier batting 357 on the year so far. As he swings swings and, and misses for strike number three from Claudio. <laughs> Claudio makes up for it and does it himself and gets Perrier swinging on his toes for route number one, and that brings up Phil Whalen, who made a huge catch to end the top or the bottom half of the second inning, rather. And had he not come down with it, that would have been trouble for London. But was able to make the catch and turn the double play to end the inning, and now has a chance to cut into this deficit that is not going to get any easier, especially with Owen Boone's pitch count climbing close to 50, and he's only pitched six outs or thrown six outs rather. And that one gets back up the middle. Moro on it over to Barless in time. Off the base. They say apparently. Barless came off the bag. That one was bang bang, and perhaps Barless's foot did leave the bag. Not much of an argument from the first baseman, but nonetheless, would have been a highlight real play had it been completed. Austin Wilkie back to the top of the order for the majors. Wilkie 0 for 1. Struck out in his first plate appearance to lead off this ball game. Officially scored a, an error on the shortstop on the throw. Let's put Whalen aboard. Now Morrow scored with the error on that one as it was a little bit off the bag as that one flares to right field and in there for a base hit. Collie Moore makes the safe play off a hop or two and Make sure the ball doesn't get behind him. So Whalen to second, Wilkie at first, and Newton to the plate. Second baseman number 38, Jacob Newton. Newton got his Newton. first career IBL home run earlier this week in the game against the Brantford Red Sox. And those mutton chops had to have something to do with it for the second baseman. As reminds me a bit of the night at the Roxbury with Will Ferrell and Chris Catan. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get that song stuck in my head now. What is love? Yep. <laughs> you don't hurt me. No more. <laughs> that one misses. Two men on, one gone. So Claudio looking for a double play ball here. And with Morrow and LaRue's foot speed and awareness at that middle of the infield, very, very likely to happen here. Newton can move. But Wilkie and Whalen, very susceptible to susceptible, excuse me, to be thrown out, and that goes out the window as that ball comes off the glove of Noah Roberts. For a pass ball, both runners will advance. Double play ball all but out of contention here against Newton. 2-0 the count. And maybe it's not just Owen Boone that's going to have some troubles here in the middle innings as Claudio faces his first sign of issues here. That one right up the middle, and that'll score one, maybe two. Wilkie holds that third, and that's the right play as Claudio cut that one off and then almost faked fired him. A, almost <laughs> fired a bull at the first. Faked out Newton, but got him to run back and held off a streaking Austin Wilkie. So a good job to just 
leave that at one run score as Cleveland Brownlee blocked back to the plate. So 4-1 the score here, top of third. Runners on the corners for Brownlee. And he flares that one. That'll score Wilkie. So Newton to second, Brownlee to first, and now it's 4-2. And this game has all of a sudden changed its outlook big time here in the last inning and a third. Robert Mullen back to the plate. He's over one, went down on strikes. Claudio's was mad at himself for leaving that one over the strike zone to, to Brownlee. He's definitely saying some words to himself out there. Yeah, the wrong guy to leave one hanging against Cleveland Brownlee, who can make no mistake on that one 99 times out of 100. As Mullen back to the plate, we'll look for his first hit of the game. Newton at second, Brownlee at first, one gone. That one popped up to Collie Moore in right field, and off the wall. That'll score Newton, that'll score Brownlee. Play at the plate, Brownlee down in time, tie ball game. And that four run lead that looked oh so comfortable just about six minutes ago is, has evaporated. Some great display of hitting here from the majors in the top half of the third to undo what the Royals were able to do in the right bottom half of the second. Starling Joseph, who found his way aboard in his first at bat with a single, was left stranded. We'll look to add to the damage here and give the Majors their first lead of the ball game. One gone. Mullen at second. Kermensky to follow. That one back to Claudio. Has Mullen in the rundown as he threw to Cush. And Cush makes the easy tag, so Joseph aboard by way of fielder's choice. However, two gone now. And Kremensky will look to find his way to the plate and find a way to make some contact here. He is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. And with two gone, would really, really like to do something with Starling Joseph at first. And... Watch for Joseph. You never want to be caught stealing as a third or first out of the inning, but with Joseph's foot speed and with the infield playing back, watch for Joseph to take off at any chance that he gets. And no question that Kaminsky struck out last time up on four pitches, so we'll see how this goes. The delivery from Claudio high and outside to check on Starling. And not a bad move from Custodio. Counts now 1-0. and oh. You can see that lead of Joseph not too, too aggressive quite yet, but that could change in an instant. Claudio sets, throws over, and again with Joseph not too far away from the bag, easily back in time. 10-1 now, Barry leads the Kitchener, Kitchener Panthers. And my, oh my, what is going on down Highway 7? Joseph takes off. Roberts makes the throw. Morrow got him. Bang, bang, inning over. Four runs aboard or across for the majors. We are tied halfway through three.
Ethan Hammond to lead it off here in the bottom of the third as that four-run lead that the Royals were able to accumulate one inning ago is gone. 4-4. Four, four. Tie ball game here halfway through the third as Owen Boone back to the mound. Delivers a first pitch strike on the inside part of the plate against Hammond who will be looking to get aboard here and he's been able to do just that quite often so far this season. He'll be followed by Malik Collymore as that one misses. And Noah Roberts also do up this inning. Roberts made that fantastic throw to end at the top half of the inning to get Joseph at second, hooking up with Connor Morrow. Just the count now, one and one. Boone, yeah, that one's inside for ball two. Majors playing like the champions they are in the IVL. Gave up a four spot and regrouped and came back with four of their own. Very, very tough to do, especially against a pitcher like Claudio Custodio. So kudos to the majors. That one finds the outside part of the plate to even the count at two and two, much to the chagrin of the Hastings crowd. The 2-2 delivered by Boone high and inside. It's been a chin music for Hammond. Backs like him off the to plate, go back perhaps. inside here, trying to get that backdoor off-speed pitch inside for the strike. That one just didn't grip it that well. We got a full count now. So the payoff from Boone coming as Hammond is ready to go. Bat on his shoulder as usual. That slight pendulum movement. Inside for ball four, and Ethan will take his base to lead off the bottom half of the third inning with a walk. And if you're the Royals, you just have to go out there and you go back. The, the approach is still the same. You still got to hit the baseball. You got to move the runner, runners around here. Malik got to lead off Manon with a walk here, so Collymore is going to have to do something. Yeah, and Collymore looked a little overzealous at the plate in his first plate appearance, so we'll see if he tightens it up here, especially with him in the board. No one gone. Hammond, or Collymore finds the gap, and that'll land in there for a base hit. Hammond off to second. The center fielder and left fielder both taking the safety approach on that one. They don't, don't know if they can get a read off the bat here yet or not, but. That one was a tough, a tricky one to read even from our standpoint, Neil. So the right play by Wilkie to just kind of lay off it and make sure it didn't go for extras as Noah Roberts back to the plate. And, Wonder what he is thinking right now after making that huge throw down to second to get Starling Joseph on a caught stealing play to end the inning. First baseman standing in on the edge of the grass here, expecting Roberts to bunt here. I don't know, if know about Noah. One past the first baseman here. Noah has a bit of power and he loves that right field wall. So we'll see if he can pull one and score some runners. Swings and misses as he dropped the back leg is. That one goes for strike one. Hammond at second. Collymore at first. Jeff McLeod due up next. McLeod swung at the first pitch he saw in his first at bat and was able to find a way aboard. So now Robert shows bunt and the infield comes way in. And that will do Excellent. his job. Yeah. Noah Roberts a fantastic sack bunt to advance both Ethan Hammond and Malik Collymore. A fantastic piece of hitting from Noah Roberts, the young catcher, and now the Royals 90 feet away with just one gone from regaining the lead. Jeff McLeod to the plate, as mentioned, one for one. He actually opened the scoring for the Royals in this ball game, and we'll be looking to do just that one more time. One gone, two on, first base open for McLeod. Infield in again to just knock this one down. McLeod, oh, <laughs> really wanted to make a difference with that swing and he just was missed. thinking about Kathleen Street on that swing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I've been breaking some windshields over those trees out in right field. Robert Mullen behind the plate has to be a wall now. Hammond, Pressure on him now. 
No slouch when it comes to his base running ability. McLeod again, hard swing at strike number two. Well, McLeod has to be, do a job here with two strikes and just protect the plate. The 0-2 coming. Is Chris Minsky not really paying too much attention over a third, giving himself a neck scratch? <laughs> oh. A cloud gets hit and Hammond decides to try to try his luck and run home, but sent back to third. McLeod aboard after being hit by the pitch. Rip so Darius Barless. Out to ask about the call at the plate while well, he's turning around. A fair argument and discussion from Owen Boone because it was as if McLeod was making an effort to hit that ball. So thankfully didn't hit him up too high. He is aboard. Bases juice now for Darius Barless. And they did appeal down to the third base umpire who says no swing. Which is the right call. They have to make the call. I mean, you're entitled to that appeal. And, of course, Mike Guthrow down at third base had better, better vantage point than the – the plate umpire did as far as the swing goes. So a fresh count for Barless. One gone, bases loaded in a tie ball game. Bottom of three. Barless lays off strike number one. Eleven one now. Barry leads after a nine run inning, following that with another run in the fourth. That game started just half an hour before ours. Barless waves at strike number two. And with Kyle Kushdu up next, not a necessity to make sure you get aboard, but you definitely, definitely don't want to hit into a double play ball here. Where runs haven't been so much at a premium of late, but you know that won't be forever thing. So Darius needs to choke up here and protect the plate and try to find a way to get aboard. The 0-2 from Boone. Misses on the inside part of the plate, one and two. And Mullen did a good job to get over and stay in front of that ball. Otherwise, Ethan Hammond might have had a free pass to home. Not exactly sure who's available in the London bullpen, of course. Bo, Bo Levington and Braden Farrington both got called upon yesterday. In that ball game. So Boone might be up there on his own merit for a little bit longer than he wants to be. No action quite yet in that bullpen either, Neil. So Barless fouls that one off to stay alive. Well back into the parking lot. The hands of Hastings come together one more time as Barless resets and will look to drive Hammond and perhaps more in with this next swing. Way Barless has been swinging it. Got a lot of confidence he's going to get something done here. Boone waits and now delivers. Misses for ball number two. Majors bench not liking that call, but it definitely was outside. From my standpoint, that was over top of the opposite batter's box. So clearly ball number two, but the majors obviously trying to will their way to a strikeout. No shame in that. Count even, two and two. And Barless looking to make an impact. Swings and misses at strike number three. And the majors still yipping back and forth with the home plate umpire for whatever reason or another. And to the point where the home plate umpire not really being too shy about the fact that he is not happy with what it's being said is Kyle Cush makes his way back to the batter's box. He's one for one with a single and a run scored. Pretty sure that was the umpire's polite way of saying knock it off. And then knock it off again. <laughs> yeah. He's still looking over there occasionally, so. Not quite sure what the argument is after the strikeout in the first place, but. That's not for me to decide as Kyle Cush now settles back in and will look to break the tie. That one in there for strike number one as it finds the outside part of the plate. And Guelph, you have to 
believe that Guelph really, really almost needs one here in this situation. They can't leave all three men stranded. They can definitely not do that, especially if they want to win this ball game. Kush swings at one in the dirt, and now Owen Boone and the Majors are a strike away from getting out of this one. Boone at 68 pitches to this point into the third inning, so. If Kush can clear the bases with a swing of the bat, that would make Owen Boone's night seem a lot longer at 68 pitches as he gets set to throw number 69. The 0-2 coming from Boone as Kush sits and waits patiently. Fouls it off to stay alive and we'll do it again. So the 0-2 is Kush just resets and now ready to go here and a deep breath from the Royals third baseman and former Silver Creek. The delivery from Boone, Kush lays off and the appeal is a failed one as the count now one and two and this at bat seemingly may take forever. Randall LaRue in the on-deck circle, and if Kyle Cush is able to do something special here, LaRue will be up next. That one high to even the count at two and two. And so Cush doing his job and making Owen Boone's pitch count now eclipse the 70 mark. Looks like Boone's having problems as well with secondary pitches to this evening, just not getting enough zip on it. I don't know if the release point's off. Something's just not right with that pitch. Yeah, he's missed quite a few times, and it's not typical of him to do so. So two and two, two gone. Bases loaded for Kyle Cush. That one misses to run the count full. And folks, get your popcorn ready. All three runners will be off with the pitch. As Kyle Cush has the weight of the world on his shoulders, as does Owen Boom with this next pitch. This could be the ball game, even in the bottom of the third. Cush swings and misses at strike three. Owen Boone and the Majors get out of it. Tie game. Score remains 4-4 as we are through three innings from Hastings Stadium.
Off of the fourth inning, it is Greg Kaminsky, the third baseman. Gibson Kaminsky, excuse me, for the third baseman for the majors. As he looks at strike number one. And the Royals must just be thinking about forgetting what just happened in the bottom half of the third inning as Kaminsky waves at strike number two. Three men aboard with no, or with one out rather, and they let it get away. Owen Boone pitched himself out of it. The score remains tied at 4-4. Keith Kandel, the former Royal do up next as Kaminsky fights that one off to stay alive. Kaminsky a lot left at the plate last inning. So the 0-2 coming from Claudio, who steps off and thinks about it for a little bit longer. Maybe some signals getting crossed with himself and Noah Roberts. The delivery from Claudio misses for ball one. So the one two from Claudio coming as the sun has now set here at Hastings. That one's in the dirt to even the count at two and two. Kaminsky came in batting 310. Average will dip slightly with the strikeout in the first inning. But still a lot of these majors hitting well over 300 as that one is hit high and deep and foul. Just foul over the 325 sign in right field. And Kaminsky looking to get that average back up there. Neil has right on cue. He pulls one, but just a little bit too early on it. The count now two and two. And it is by a box of popcorn, get yourself a free hat night here at Hastings Stadium. <laughs> As a number of children have elected to throw it on top of their dome, and why not? That's making use of what you buy. Count full now, three and two. And it is recyclable as well, so, you know. Helping the planet, right. our future looks bright here on planet Earth. As the payoff pitch coming from Claudio. Swings and misses and gets him down on strikes. Kremensky, the second strikeout of his evening, and Claudio bouncing back after giving up a four spot in the top of the third. Now Keith Kandel, the shortstop back to the plate. Be looking to get aboard here. The Barry Baycats now leading the Kitchener Panthers, excuse me, 14 to one in the top of the fifth inning. It's been a long week for Kitchener's pitching staff, that's for sure. And Claudio finds the zone for strike number one. And yeah, you have to feel for the, the Cats of Kitchener because that is just a never ending nightmare at this point in time. And doesn't seem to be getting any easier as that one misses inside on Candell, who is able to dip, duck, dodge, dodge, dive, and dodge again to get out of the way. The 1-1 one, one from Claudio inside again, and Keith not too pleased with that one. Count now 2-1. and one. Kandel 27 for 87 on the season, 310 batting average. Three home runs, like I mentioned off the top. 16 RBIs, so not bad for the 7-hole. And again on the inside on Candell, so not that you'd want to wear one from Claudio coming in at that rate of speed, but a free base is a free base right now, and... Had it not been for that power and production at the plate that Candell's shown so far this season, maybe he would lean into one, but a formidable hitter takes his free base on a five-pitch walk, which that one kind of seemed to be borderline. Not sure if it was just low, but nonetheless, Candell aboard with a one-out walk here in the top of the fourth inning. Dan Perrier back to the plate. First baseman was down on strikes in his first appearance, and with Kendall at first, we'll look to try to break this tie. 
And he'll still got some wheels out there, so wouldn't be surprised he takes off somewhere in this pitch. That one high, and Roberts pops right up, expecting Kandel to maybe try to steal one right off the hop, but no go on that one. So the count, 1-0. and oh. And if you're Connor Morrow, you're just thinking for a, hoping for a slow roller as that one fouled and misses the netting behind home plate and into the parking lot. Pit run was definitely on on that pitch as Kanda was on, on his way down a second on that motion. Custodio at 51 pitches now here in the fourth. Comparatively to Owen Boone, who is in the mid-70s, I believe, at last check, so... Claudio just looking to hopefully get through this one without too much taxing done on his night. That one, as Kandel takes off, will not be in time as Moro playing the safety behind LaRue. Kandel in there with a swiped bag here in the top of the fourth. Count is now one ball and two strikes, though, so Custodio's got somebody on the ropes here. Perrier, that person who is on the ropes, and... Two up next is the nine hitter, Phil Whelan. Claudio delivers and gets Perrier swinging. Another strikeout for the league's ace, Claudio Custodio. Phil Whelan, who found his way aboard in his first plate appearance. Whelan reached on air last time. And I believe later scored. Yep, the unearned run in the third. Custodio on hook for three other earned runs though. Four total in the contest. And a big reason why this game is tied. Two gone here, top of the fourth. Claudio gets him swing at the first pitch for strike number one. Anytime you give a team like London an extra out here, it hurts. And that definitely was the case in the third inning. Yeah, on display in that third inning for sure and it ended up costing Guelph their lead. If Whelan is able to get aboard, Austin Wilkie will be back for the third time to the plate this evening as we will flip the order over once again. That one inside to even the count at one and one. Custodio wants this, this batter here, this situation, so he can face the top of the order in the fifth. Yeah, this is, again, another huge juncture of this ball game. As Whelan awaits Claudio. Claudio checks and throws over, but unfortunately that one in the dirt to get Kandel, but not in time, and off the mark. As some four-legged furry friends now end up, end up joining the party on the first baseline, the beer garden down on the third baseline, so... Lots of bodies filling up these seats and the extra area available on the tree lines as Claudio now a strike away. This definitely harkens back to the Royals days of the early 90s like manager Dino Romel has been hopefully toting all year long. He just wants to see the crowd grow as we continue to go further in this regular season and it's such a great sight to come into the Hastings Stadium and see wall to wall lawn chairs out there. This one gets away from Roberts and Candel will go to third. Yeah, and in our pregame show with Dino and Barks, he was talking about how loyal these fans are, and obviously after such a long layoff between home games due to COVID, it's nice to see that loyalty still runs true and runs strong through the Royals fans. And count now two and two. Kendall did advance the third on that pitch, and now Claudio with a little bit more work to do. And Whelan looking just to find a way to find a hole. That one high again as Roberts pops right up. That won't sell any sort of ball as a strike, and now the count is full. I think Roberts in that situation has got to trust the pitch from Claudio. Stay down there and let the umpire decide that one. Exactly, and it's again, it's making the choice for the umpire when he pops up that way. The payoff in the dirt, and we are back to the top of the order, and Austin Wilkie for his third plate appearance of the evening. One for two with a strikeout and a single and a run scored for the center fielder from London.
Manager Gino Rommel coming out to have a chat with his pitcher and his catcher. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like it's just a, a matter of getting those two on the same page here as Claudio doesn't appear to be too fatigued. And I think Dino wants all of the infield in here. And Kyle Cush and Connor Morrow do join the conversation as well. Probably just a reminder what to do here in this situation if Whalen leads off from first and goes down with Candell fanning at third base. Have to see here. Candell representing the go-ahead run, so yeah, you know that. This out is a near must for Claudio, Noah, and the rest of the Royals. And it is officially dusk here at Hastings Stadium, and another perfect night for baseball. We've been rained out just once so far this, this season, Neil, excluding the home opener that was not. That was act of God by trees. <laughs> so, I mean, Tuesday night's game was obviously postponed. No make update yet, but other than that, we've been blessed with some great weather for baseball. No question we have been. It hasn't been, like, overly too hot or anything like that. It's just been pretty comfortable as far as once the sun goes down. It's still definitely shorts and T-shirt weather, even though. The bugs haven't been too abundant, and I mean, wait till August, but. I think they're all hanging out by my swimming pool, actually. That's <laughs> beside the point. I go Still there early water. in the morning and get eaten alive before I go to work. That one inside as Claudio threw over twice to check on Whalen at first before actually delivering a pitch to Wilkie. That one misses. Wilkie ahead in the count, 1 0. Tie ball game here, two gone. Top of the fourth inning. Claudio delivers, that one finds the zone for strike one. As mentioned, Wilkie one for two, did strike out in his first appearance, but later had a single and scored in his second at bat, and that one fouled off, and now the count one and two. And here are the Hastings hands yet again. One of the most beautiful ballparks in all of the IBL, David E. Hastings Stadium, is yet again packed to the rafters for a classic matchup with the Royals and the Majors. We're tied at four. Claudio throws over to Barless, trying to get Whalen at first yet again for the third time in this at bat. They've tried to pick off Whalen at first. I think I was also trying to see if Candell was going on that first movement as well, but Candell is a little too smart for him. He just froze on his spot there. And now Whalen takes off, and LaRue yeah. forces him out at second to end the inning. And much like the bottom of the third, the Royals bend but don't break. We are still tied halfway through four.
Brandel LaRue to lead it off in the bottom half of the fourth inning. The Royals who are tied 4-4 with the Majors here. And a season that has seen so many classic games already take place on this field. This one shaping up to be just another one so far tonight as we are halfway through the fourth inning in a 4-4 ball game with Brando LaRue to lead it off, J.D. Williams and Connor Morrow to follow. Boone still in there, misses for ball number one, and Robert Mullen shakes his head at that one. I'm not quite sure what the miscommunication was as he had set up inside, that pitch came outside for ball one to start the bottom of the fourth. LaRue swings and misses to even the count at one and one. LaRue back up the middle. On to first for out number one. Keith Kandel made no mistake on that one and then was able to fire it over to the first baseman. Dan Perrier, and that records out number one. LaRue down quickly. And J.D. Williams comes back to the plate for his third go around. He is one for two with a strikeout. Hit a double and was left stranded at second base his second time out. And we'll look to break this tie here as he takes his time as Perrier reties his shoe at first. And a bit of a delay here, but a welcomed one for probably Owen Boone, whose pitch count continues to climb. After a pretty quick first and half of the second inning. This game's pace has slowed down quite a bit and the pitch counts have continued to grow as that one is a first pitch strike from Boo. The 0-1 bounces off the glove and off the dirt and out of play to even the count at one and one. And Still again, no in that Majors bullpen, which is kind of surprising, but you know, when you got one of your, your higher leverage guys out there, you got Boone out there or Jose Arias. You probably want to let your starter go as far as you can, especially when you've got Wellen coming into Labatt Park tomorrow night at 7.30. As Williams slices that one and pulls it foul. Chops it rather foul. And down the third baseline and the count now one and two. And yeah, Neil was right on cue as I was gonna mention, it looks like there's not much going on down in the London bullpen. And as you mentioned, when you have your ace out there, you may as well use him. And after that four run second inning, he is settled right down. That one misses low and outside to even the count at two and two. Two two from Boone swung on by Williams and pulled it foul yet again. Count remains the same. Connor Morrow loosens up in the on deck circle. Morrow is over two in this game. You know he'd like to turn that around. His next time out, which will be shortly. As Boone obviously taking his time, maybe fatigue setting in. It's a lot of pitches and not too many innings so far for Owen. Waits and waits. Now delivers. Williams, oh, poked one and it was just foul down the first baseline. So count again, two and two. That's some serious discipline by Williams here to just reach out that one and say, hey, I'm not going to be able to do much with it, but I'm going to try to put it down the right field line and make sure that it's not a called strike three for the second time in this game. And that one a swung on high, high strike number three. And he knows it and everyone in Hastings knows it as Connor Morrow back to the plate. Shortstop tonight, 0 for 2, but has been lights out at the plate. 
before this evening's outing. So the law of averages tells us anything. Don't blink on this one because it could be Connor's time. That blue light special at the plate here could light up at any time. And that went hit high and deep to left field. And just short of the wall, but oh my. Whalen, Phil Whalen hits the wall hard, able to pop back up, and that is using your face if you're Phil Whalen. Morrow ends up with a double out of it, but you could see the wooden wall of Hastings Stadium's left field flex as Whalen ran into it. Yeah, at least that, Labatt Park anyways. Else, there's, there's a little bit of padding in Labatt. That one's all wood. That was all Whalen bouncing back off that. And you'd think that we'll check on him and hope that he's okay. And Morrow takes a peek out there. And one of the shorter parts of the ballpark, but it looked like it had a real chance to go off the bat and just kind of died out there. But nonetheless, a two-out double for Connor Morrow. And Ethan Hammond back to the plate. And now Connor Morrow again was due for a hit, and he got just that. Hammond one for one. Reached by way of walk in his second plate appearance. So Hammond again, just watching that batting average and on base percentage climb and climb again so far tonight. Two gone, Morrow at second in a tie game here, bottom of four. Hammond swings at the first one he sees and misses. Phil Whalen appears no worse for wear after that collision with the outfield wall. Hammond swings around on that one and misses again. 0-2, and, and now Owen Boone, a strike away from getting out of it again. The 0-2 from Boone coming shortly. Mullen set up on the outside part of the plate. That one misses. Major's trying to call strike three, and Hammond laid off, and it is ball number one. To a man, it looks like the Major's defense almost walked off the field on that pitch. Really trying to sell the strike here yep. <laughs> are the Majors. they got to realize it's not automatic here. So Boone now set to do it again. Hammond slices that one off his own body and foul to stay alive. Malik Collymore on deck if Hammond is able to keep this inning alive. And one would think, I would gather, that Owen Boone's pitch count is now approaching 90 by this stage of the ball game. 86 to be exact, 87 coming. That one bounces, and that will advance Ethan Ham or Connor Moore to third, and Ethan Hammond remains at home plate as the count is now 2-2. Two and two. It's definitely a wild pitch on that one. Put my hands up at a reflex just like normal. <laughs> Forgot there was a mesh there. I think Morrow could have maybe scored, came home before the ball landed after that hop that seemed to go a mile high. Well, with the dry weather we've had most of this summer so far, the only downpour was Tuesday, so the ground's getting a little hard over there. Yeah, and a surprising cancellation or postponement of that ball game because the rain had stopped here in Guelph by midday. And it wasn't like it was overly torrential, but obviously did enough damage to the field that they didn't want to play on it and risk tearing anything up as Hammond swings and misses at strike three. This game remains tied through four innings. We're off to the fifth.
And a quick middle of the fifth inning, or end of the fourth inning, excuse me, as we are off to the top of the fifth here. Top of the fifth, leading off the And London, Jacob Newton. The second baseman, number 38, Jacob Newton. We'll get it started for the majors, who after we, this game was just clipping along at a great rate of play, has slowed right down as we are now about an hour and 40 minutes into it and just through four innings. So looking like another three plus hour game here at Hastings Stadium, which has been not so uncommon so far this season. And especially with a pitching duel that was billed to be a ace on ace one, it seems that the pitch counts for both the majors and the Royals starters have probably climbed and multiplied higher than one would expect here through four innings. As Claudio was even at one and one on Newton. Newton one for two with a run scored. And it's quite possible because Studio is still not over top of that Sunday's game in Toronto, of course, 144 pitches, 18 strikeouts, but it's got to think it's got to take a slight toll on you anyways. 144 pitches would be enough for me to retire. Never mind, come back six days later and play again. That one in there for a strike to even the count at two and two. Brownlee and Mullen do up next for the majors here in the top of the fifth. In the course, one for two. He singled and scored a run in the third inning as an RBI. That one misses. Count now full. And still no one up in the majors bullpen and with Owen Boone at or around 90 pitches now. One has to wonder how many pitches he'll end up throwing tonight. Must be sponsored by Advil. <laughs> that one chopped to LaRue at second over to Barless at first for out number one. A textbook put out from LaRue to Barless. A clean inning would do wonders for Custodio and the Royals here. Number 35, Cleveland Brownlee. Haven't had one since the first inning. And remember Brownlee made Custodio pay on that last time out. And hit a single and later scored a part of that four run third inning from the majors that erased Guelph's four run lead that they had accumulated just a half inning prior to that as that one's in there for a strike, much to the dismay of Cleveland Brownlee and who can blame him on that one? He moved his head as if that was coming chin high. That one broke over the plate at the last moment. Brownlee was like, where's that one? It's like the umpire's right over the plate. And that one misses low and inside to even the count at one and one. I'm not sure if Brownlee, when he moved his head, missed the ball break back in, but clearly did not agree with the strike call. But now we're even at one and one, so we will go from here. Claudio against Cleveland. What do you say about Cleveland Brownlee? It hasn't been said. I don't know. He's like the ageless wonder. That one's fouled off his body here, and that one's not going to feel nice tomorrow. Maybe not even a half inning, even. As he will walk it off. And yeah, Cleveland's been around for quite some time and continues to just breed success. So, showing no signs of slowing down in his career. Came to tonight's contest with a 405 average, nine home runs, which is the highest in the IBO. And 34 RBIs, so I'll make it 35 tonight. He's already got one on the board tonight, is ready. So he's equal to his number on his back. For the man from Georgia. So the one, two coming from Claudio on Cleveland here. Mullen due up next. He's also gone long nine times this season as Brownlee down on strikes. Swings and misses for his second strikeout of the game. Got to bring up the dangerous Robert Mullen now. He's one for two with a double and two RBIs. And he's got some power this season as well. So this middle of the lineup for the majors is nothing to miss out on. As Mullen came in batting 443. Nine home runs tied him with Cleveland Brownlee. Second in RBIs at 29. Oh, sorry, up to 30 now. So the Majors doing the damage with their order. And not to mention Starling Joseph, who 
Kind of scratch your head wondering why he hits behind both Brownlee and Mullen with his foot speed. As that one tracked by Brando LaRue and hauled in for out number three. Quick work of the majors does Claudio Custodio make. We are halfway through five. This game is still tied. Bottom half of the fifth inning in a tie ball game, and Malik Collymore looking to get it going as he will lead it off. He'll be followed by Noah Roberts and Jeff McLeod here in this half of the inning. Collymore one for two. Struck out in his first outing and then had a single and was left stranded at second. Back in the third inning. That one in there for a strike from Owen Boone, who again quickly a pitch hit, or approaching rather the century mark in pitches here tonight. And 99 on the board now, so his next pitch will be number 100. And the 100th pit of, 100th pitch of his game, excuse me, is fouled off for strike number two. You got to think this is probably it for Boone this half inning. He's just trying to get out here and his game his team in this game right now and a strike away from sitting down Malik Collymore who came into this game full of confidence but so far unable to break through other than that single that didn't really result in much else as he fouls that one off to stay alive the bats that came alive ever so quickly here for the Royals have gone back to bed since the bottom half of the second inning. The bats that are still alive are the Beery Baycats bats who have scored 20 runs against the Kitchener Panthers tonight. And that is, if my math is correct, Collymore high and shallow to left as he got under that one with an uppercut for out number one. Just missed that one. That Congrats. one looked, I saw it climb to the sky and I figured, you know what, maybe it has a chance, but. Some wasted distance with the height of that ball. Otherwise, it could be a different story. Anyways, the Panthers have conceded quite a few runs over the past few games. You guys can do the math at home if you'd like, and it's just a lot is the answer. As Noah Roberts is back to the plate, 0 for 2. Swings and misses at strike one.
despite the pinch count, Boone's got a, a plethora of strikeouts tonight as well. Albeit high pitch count strikeouts, not just three pitch strikeouts, and that's kind of where that number. The Royals pitching, batting has definitely done their job. They've definitely made them work a lot of counts to three and two. Count now one and one here with Roberts, and Roberts lays off. Count now two and one. The two one from Boone in the dirt. Three and one. The Royals don't play the majors again till August, so. A lot of things can change between now and then, but it's always good if you're a Royals team looking to get it. You know, it's the last team we haven't beat this year, too, so it would be nice to get this one out of the way here. Yeah, kind of a mental win if they can pull out the victory here tonight. The 3-1 and one coming from Boone on Roberts now. Delivered, swung on and missed. We are now full, 3-2. and two. As the crowd gets back into it here at Hastings Stadium. And it urges Noah Roberts along. I think all we're missing down the lines now is somebody on a couch. But you've got lawn chairs five and six deep in various sections as Roberts goes down on strikes here. And Owen Boone again showing no signs of fatigue. Over 100 pitches as Jeff McLeod makes his way back to the plate for the third time this evening. One for one. He was hit by a pitch in his second plate appearance and will be looking to blow the doors off this one. In his third go at it this evening, Darius Barless due up next if McLeod can get aboard. McLeod with that bat, cocked back in ready position as Boone delivers and McLeod lays off for ball number one. I think if Mullen would have caught that one cleanly, he probably would have got the strike call, but he kind of fumbled it, so umpire didn't give the inside one there. Second one somehow comes back over the outside part of the plate to even the count out one and one. And again, the umpires in the crowd seem to disagree. Well, only one of them gets paid to actually call balls and strikes, unfortunately. McLeod checks off that one but cannot pull back in time. One and two. Still no action in the Majors bullpen. The one two coming from Boone. McLeod lays off count now even two and two. Absolutely no wind whatsoever here at the stadium. The flagpole in center field is rather limp. <laughs> <laughs> On point, Neil. <laughs> As McLeod pokes one down the third baseline, and he is aboard. The bat of Jeff McLeod comes alive, and Darius Barless back to the plate now. Make sure my kids went to bed before I said that. <laughs> Bar looking to do the job here. That one in there for strike number one. Somebody not like the music that we can hear in some other music somewhere in the park. <laughs> McLeod at first. Cush on deck as Barless fights that one off. Count 0 and 2. Not sure that went in off Mullen's glove or in the, off his bat there. Some tense moments here at Hastings Stadium. Is this crowd on the edge of their seats here? We are two thirds of the way through the bottom of the fifth inning, and Darius Barless, who is one for two, or excuse me, 0 for one, 
Reached by a way of walk, his first plate appearance, and then struck out the second time out. Is down 0-2 and fouls that one off into the parking lot. And stays alive. So the 0-2, we're going to do it again here with Barless at the plate and McLeod with a conservative lead at first as Perrier is right on the bag for the majors. And Boone sets and delivers, and Barless lays off one and two. Boone is finding that second, third, and fourth gear here in this inning. I'm not sure how he's going to feel tomorrow, but right now he's feeling all right by the looks of it. One, two, coming from Boone on Barless now. In there for strike number three, and Darius does not like it. That is another strikeout from Owen Boone, who is through five innings, but over 100 pitchers. We're tied. Off to the sixth we go here at Hastings. Back to Hastings Stadium for the top of the sixth inning. Brendan Keyes into the game behind home plate. In relief of Noah Roberts, Claudio Custodio remains in the game. And Starling Joseph will lead it off for the London Majors. Could also be his fact that you know, Noah Roberts probably caught this afternoon in the Silver Crease game as well, so we'll have to see. It's a long time in the squad if you're Noah Roberts. And obviously with a few miscues between him and Claudio, Fatigue may have set in, and Brennan Keyes, who played extremely well in the game on Thursday, is back at it behind home plate now here in the sixth inning as that ball misses. 
1 0 the count. Joseph ahead of Custodio. Custodio on Kaherick's traditionally not been able to get ahead of the count as much as he usually does. Tonight, anyways. But has found a way to even it up quite quickly, Neil. But you're absolutely correct. It's usually first pitch strike automatically for Claudio, and that has not been the case so far tonight. As the bright lights of Hastings Stadium shine down on Starling Joseph, who is a strike away from being sat down for the first time this evening. He is has a single and reached by way of fielder's choice his second at bat, so has been able to make some contact so far this evening and in danger of going down on strikes for the very first time in this game. Fouls that one off to stay alive. Marquee matchup of the Saturday night games. Obviously, the Barry Baycats and Kitchener Panthers game is all but over. This one far from it here. And Joseph down on strikes as Claudio gets him swinging. We're out number one here in the top of the sixth. Third and that brings up the third baseman, Gibson Kremensky. Kremensky is over two with two strikeouts so far tonight. And Claudio appears to be dealing now into a quick conversation with Brendan Keyes out on the mound. Comes to a close and Keyes back to assume the position behind home plate. And Kremensky will step in. Claudio delivers and misses. Again, the count 1-0. and oh. Something that you know he'll be looking to address in his next time out. But as Neil mentioned, with that 144 pitch outing on Sunday, a forgivable amount of misses here. And Claudio frustrated now. 2-0. Oh. Custodio waits, sets, delivers the 2-0, in there for a strike. Again, Kremensky yet to get aboard two strikeouts so far, 0 for 2. Keith Kendall is up next as that evens the count at 2-2, two and, two, and Kremensky doesn't like it, so... Some frustration from both the pitcher and the batter in this AB. And Kremensky is strike away from going down and wearing the collar here tonight. That one misses. Count now two and two. Excuse me, three and two. We are ready to go. Kandel loosening up on deck. He is due up next. Claudio misses for ball four and a walk to Kremensky. And again, the umpires that volunteer their way here at Hastings Stadium disagree. Kremensky aboard with a one out walk. Kandel now back to the plate. Kandel. 0 for 1, found his way aboard by way of balls, his second time out. Candelo shows bunt but takes it away there. And it goes for a ball again, so the three or four straight batters now at least that Claudio's fallen behind on. If you're in the majors, you're playing on the road here, you're just playing to get another run up top. Force the Royals to do something in their home half of the inning here. That's a foul ball, so that play called dead. Even the count at one and one. Everybody clap your hands. 
So Kremensky retreats back to first base. Candell back to the plate in a 1-1 count. Waits for instruction from the third base coach and steps back in. Claudio gets Candell this swing. Morrow behind it to second to LaRue. Over to first, can't make the turn and throw in time. But that will get Kremensky at second as Candell is aboard by way of fielder's choice. With Dan Perrier back to the plate yet again. Perrier also with two strikeouts in this ball game. First baseman number 15, Dan Perrier. Definitely the right call by LaRue to eat that one at second base. You wouldn't have had a chance at Candell if anyway. No, Candell, as you mentioned, has some speed. So he was down that base path real quick and was in there safe no matter what. So Claudio sat down Perrier twice already on strikes this evening as Kendall takes off for second base. And LaRue with an athletic play and makes out number three. A scoop, swoop, and tag to send the majors back to the dugout and send us off to the bottom of the sixth inning. Back here for the home half of the sixth inning against Kyle Cush. Kyle Cush. Cush one for two with a strikeout, but also has a run scored in this game. And Owen Boone still on the mound for the majors with no sign of relief coming from London's or bullpen. If you're Cush here, you got to take attention to where the third baseman and first baseman are playing. They're way behind the bag here. That one misses low and outside. And yeah, there were some murmurs of a leadoff bunt here from Kush, but with that thought in mind, as some fireworks behind center field set off, so that will draw time. A little early for the fireworks. And Kush swings and fouls off the second pitch he sees. The count now one and one. Last weekend, we held up the drone display for the Guelph games. It was actually when we were leaving, it actually didn't look too bad, actually. Well, and again, with the lights on Hastings Stadium illuminating so brightly, it would have taken away from the special closing event of the Guelph games. That was that light show, so the drone show, rather. And Chris takes strike number two with the infield still playing well back. Randall LaRue due up next. He'll be followed by J.D. Williams. That one misses to even the count at two and two. The 
2 2 coming. Cush lays off and looks at ball three. We are full. Count now full on Cush from Boone. 113 pitches for Boone on the night. And Cush gets a hold of that one and pops it to left field, but not nearly deep enough. And that is caught by Whelan for out number one. And LaRue back to the plate. Brando has made some amazing defensive plays so far tonight. And is one for two with a run score to hit that double that really was what was the catalyst of that four run second inning. And would love nothing more than to find a way aboard and into scoring position or better now after grounding out a second time out. First pitch misses for ball number one. That one bounces and gets away and now 2-0. Oh. You gotta wonder how much Boone's got left in this tank now, he's just. He's definitely laboring over there as he grips the baseball even more. He's just trying to loosen it up a little bit. Yeah, you have to. up the seams a little bit here. And you'd have to think he's running on empty at this point in time. And again, the bullpen of the major is quiet. The 2-0 from Boone on LaRue. LaRue slices that one behind home plate. Mullen makes an effort to make the play. That is well, well beyond the fence for strike number one. Well, I thought it was interesting. Both Jose Arias and Owen Boone made the trick on the London Majors bus. Usually if you're the starting pitcher for a Sunday night game, you don't usually make the trip with the team. So, again, I, I think it was a, a game-time decision by manager Rube Schneider, that as to which starter was going to go tonight. And, again, with a jam-packed weekend for the Majors, there's no real relying on Arias to come into this game in relief of Boone and that bullpen is watching but not warming up as LaRue swings and misses to even the count at two and two. And that's probably just a, a mistake on the youngsters part here. He should have asked for time as Boone was taking forever and a day to throw that pitch. And that will be learned from LaRue as he continues to get more and more games under his belt as that one misses low and outside for ball three and Boone not doing himself any favors here running the count full yet again. The rally popcorn caps going around the stands now. And you notice how many of those popcorn caps are actually stacked on top of one another. Yeah. It's a lot of popcorn. LaRue checks and takes ball number four in the dirt. Get aboard with a one out walk. And here comes J.D. Williams for the fourth time in this ball game. Manager Rupert Chander that just motion to the bullpen to get somebody up there. Looks like he's waving like he's ready to go. As Robert Mullen takes a trip out to calm down Boone and perhaps delay a little more time. J.D. Williams! And again, Major this is William. Waving their hats out there, so indicate whoever it is is coming in is ready to go. And Rupe Chander is gonna go make that change now. So Boone finally, finally getting some relief, it appears to be. The end of his evening, nearing the 120 pitch mark. As there will be at least a short conversation and perhaps a handoff of the ball, and there it is, and Owen Boone's night is over. Through one third of the way through the bottom of the sixth inning, Boone allowed four runs in a tie game, and will likely get a no decision unless Brando LaRue, who Boone is on the hook for, comes around to score. We'll take a quick break. We'll figure out who's going to take over for Boone on the mound. We'll be back with the rest of this sixth inning.
Welcome back to Hastings Stadium. It's Neil Shrewastawa in with Scotty Fraser, who's sampling one of the best hot dogs in the IBL. As, as Cesar Cabral comes in to pitch here to J.D. Williams. Cabral got a 150 ERA, six innings pitch, 10 strikeouts so far for the majors. Counts even at one and one here. Williams followed by Connor Morrow with Brandon LaRue at first base. Oh, misses outside and Cabral behind the count at two balls and a strike. The name of the Santa Domingo from the Dominican Republic on the hill for the majors in relief of Owen Boone. Of course, Lou is Boone's responsibility at first base. Should he come to the end of the score? That misses outside again. Williams has definitely got the green light here to put something in play. As LaRue Lee is off from first base. Strike call on the outside part of the plate to run the count to full here at three and two. Three two is lined over the head of Candell into center field for a base hit. LaRue on his horse, he's going to third. Williams has to hold that first with a single, and the Royals have got runners on the corners with one away. I bring up the shortstop Connor Morrow, who's one for three in the afternoon, or the evening anyways. Double his last time up, got stranded at third base in the fourth. And not a word of a lie, the best hot dog in the IBL goes down quick. And runners at the corners, maybe it's also a good luck dog. As Morrow now with a chance to break this tie. With one gone, Williams takes off for second. Throw down is on. Williams slides underneath the tag and is safe. At second base. Royal and now the Royals strike. with a real chance to get something done here. That pitch was a strike called. But Morrow with first base open, double play ball out of contention. Infield in back in. As the majors once again have to knock it down and keep it in front of them here to make the out. Morrow waves at one low and outside. For strike two, and you really, really don't want to strike out in this scenario if you're Connor Morrow. Both LaRue and Williams have got decent speed out there, so anything deep enough should be able to score one. That one bounces, ball one. Cesar Cabral, the lefty setting and waiting now and looking to get himself out of this jam and make sure Owen Boone isn't charged for the run that stands at third base by way of Brando LaRue. Morrow swings and misses at strike three. And that puts the weight of the world on Ethan Hammond. Hammond one for two in the, in the contest. Hammond the lefty first on inning. lefty now with Cabral. Walked in the third. Looks down, struck out swinging in the fourth. Would love to atone for those leaving that runner out there the last time up. Two gone, first base open. 
Hammond swings and misses. A big cut at the first pitch he sees from Cabral for strike number one. Bro sets, Mullen sets up outside. No one comes back across the plate, and now the Majors are again one strike away from getting out of it. And after seeing Owen Boone time and time and time again, Cabral the a much different look and delivery here for the Majors on the mound. One misses as Mullen went to run off. Thought that was inning over. Can't fault Mullen for trying on that one. He seemed mighty certain and Ethan Hammond not too impressed. And we'll see if Hammond can make them pay for that one. You never want to show the umpire up to the catcher. Especially with the barking back and forth between the home plate umpire and the dugout so far for London. That one almost gets away from Mullen, but able to snare it and haul it in and keep the ball from getting by him, which would have scored the go-ahead run for Guelph. Count now. Two and two, with two on and two gone in the bottom of the sixth inning in a tie ball game. Infield backs up quite generously. Hammond fouls that one off and stays alive. Rell and Mullen on the same page now. The 2-2 two -two coming. And he gets Hammond looking for strike number three. Ethan Hammond down on strikes and the Royals leave two men stranded in a golden opportunity to give themselves the lead back, but it goes for naught. We are through six innings at Hastings Stadium, tied at four. Top of the seventh inning here at Hastings Stadium. I'm Neil Shrewastma. Thank you for joining us on your Saturday night. 4-4 four four is the score here as the Majors and Royals are locked, deadlocked. Scotty Fraser will be back momentarily with the call. As Daniel Perry leads something off here. First pitch misses low for a ball. From Claudio Custodio. That one got inside and got enough of them. 
issue the free pass to first base. And a leadoff walk from Claudio is not what you would expect from him or want to see if you're the Royals, but Phil Whalen back to the plate now. Left fielder number 21, Phil Whalen. Pinch runner coming in, relief of Dan Perrier. That is Drew Lawrence, who will take over at first. Both as a runner and likely defensively as well. Running at first base, pinch running, number 14, Drew Lawrence. So some fresh legs for the majors here who look to break the tie. Whalen 0 for 1. He reached on an error in the third inning that started off that snowball effect that the majors Bounced back after giving the Royals four runs in the second inning. They answered back with four of their own. And Claudio gets a first pitch strike for the first time in a long time. With Lawrence with a huge lead over at first. And Whalen showing bunt, and that's a strike. Not a bad idea if you're the majors here. Like I said, just trying to move that runner into scoring position and let somebody in the top of the order do the job. Yeah, Phil Whalen having to do it the hard way. And again, with Wilkie due up next, his job here is to advance Lauren in any means possible. That one comes back in over the plate for strike three. Huge out there. If you're the Claudio Custodio now. they got the top of the order coming up. With a chance for a double play to get out of this. Make quick work of the majors in the seventh inning on top of it. As Wilkie waits his instructions and tightens the batting gloves and loosens up and steps in here. His fourth time to the plate against Claudio tonight. So we'll see if he has a bit of a book on the Royals ace by this point in time in the evening. Claudio delivers, and that one misses somewhere for ball number one. Wilkie, of course, attends the University of Western Ontario. One of the Mustangs in there when he was in here with against the Griffins. The day after they won, the Majors won the, the IBL trophy. As that one gets away from Keys. Keys can't haul that one in. That one advances Lawrence to second, so double play ball. No longer an option. Wilkie had 2-0 in the count as well, so. Uh, going the books of the pass ball off the glove of Keys. It's been one of the Royal struggles, struggles this year. The catcher's not able to keep a handle on most baseball some nights. And Wilkie swings and misses and checks with the home plate umpire to make sure that would have been a strike regardless had he not swung. Lawrence now at second and inches back towards the second base. And so he was looking to be about halfway to third at one point there, but doubled back and Claudio checked and Lawrence st stood pat. Wilkie fouled that one off to even the count at two and two. Jacob Newton due up next. Looks like He'll Brandon Deans is loosening up in the Royals bullpen if needed. One half of the Infuego brothers. We gotta talk about that after, by the way. I'll let them tell the story one of these days. <laughs> yeah. It's better told by both of them. As yeah. Claudio gets Wilkie swinging for another strikeout tonight and just add it to the pile for Custodio on the season. So Newton back to the plate, followed by Brownlee and Mullen. If we get any further, then Newton. Claudio keeps up at this pace. It, it, it's unfathomable, but there might be somebody in the IBL with 200 strikeouts this year. Like he said, 120 plus now, but we're only halfway through the season. 
and you would think that he's not going to slow down in terms of the times, the amount of appearances he gets as we head through the dog days of summer. Today, July 9th. And quickly we can blink and it'll be August and Claudio might eclipse that 200 strikeout mark within the next month or so. Letter 11 tonight. <laughs> well, yeah, at that rate, it's about five or six more starts and we'll be talking about it. That one misses outside again. I think he's getting tired. This doesn't seem to have the same crisp on the spin on that baseball right now. Two and oh, two gone, top seven, four, four game. Lawrence at second for the majors. Newton awaits. Claudio delivers and misses. Ball three. So that one not getting the call, and now Claudio delivers the fourth pitch of the at-bat, and that one is in there for a strike. That might have lit the fire in Custodio's belly here. We'll see what this next pitch brings as it's on its way to the plate, chopped. And Claudio with tons of time over to first base, Darius Barless. Records the put out, Claudio a one to three, third out and the game remains tied as we stretch it out in the middle of the seventh. Malik Collymore to lead it off here in the bottom of the seventh and look to break the tie with the London Majors here in what is shaping up to be a very, very important ball game for both of these teams who, as Neil mentioned, won't see each other again until the calendar flips to August. So a long time to think about a win and an even longer time to dwell on a loss, depending on what side of it you end up on as Collymore takes strike one. A few shifts in the outfield for the majors as Whalen, who was playing left field to start this game, Phil Whalen, is now at first. As Drew Lawrence came in relief as a pinch runner for Dan Perrier, who previously occupied that spot. The 1-1 now 
Misses to make it two and one. Only more ahead in the count. He is one for three. First time he has seen Cabral tonight. As we have eclipsed the 10 o'clock hour at 10.08. So this game at two hours and 38 minutes here and only halfway through seven innings. We are well on our way to another three hour event here at Hastings Stadium on a Saturday night special. The good thing is the Jays game started just about a couple minutes ago anyway, so. Baseball fans will have tons to watch here tonight as Collie Moore is down on strikes for the second time this evening. And that brings Jeez. Brendan Keyes to the plate who took over for Noah Roberts. Catcher number 23, Brendan Keyes. <laughs> Better than those crappy music anyways. Keyes did walk up to the Noah Roberts walk up tune and we'll see if that brings him any luck. As he checks his swing and it's appealed down the third baseline. Third base umpire says he did not go around, so one and oh. Keyes swings and misses at that one and it's one and one. If the Royals, you got to hope for one more opportunity here to atone for that, the small village we've left on base so far. <laughs> Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself as Keyes looks at strike number two. And Cabrell is dealing right now. Yeah, base is loaded, left stranded, a pair left stranded in scoring position once, maybe twice in this ballgame. So enough runs that were able to be brought home that were just left astray and that is a big reason why this game remains tied not seen a run scored since the top of the third inning or else stranding eight on eight on base to this point and that's just too many as keys waves at that one in the dirt he has a chance to get there but is throwing out as Mullen got right on top of it and threw it down to Whalen for out number two. And Jeff McLeod now comes back to the plate looking to break the tie with one swing of the bat. The designated hitter, number 14, Jeff McLeod. McLeod making the most of his opportunities tonight. Two singles and a hit by pitch, plus a run scored. Gets some encouragement from the crowd, a fan favorite. and. Again, one of the most entertaining guys in baseball, Jeff McLeod, looking to break this tie with two gone here in the bottom of seven. Swings the first pitch he sees in a hot Hastings hop over the head of Phil Whelan for a single. Whelan made the great call there and ducked it out of the way of that one, or that would have been chicklets for sure. We saw Damon Topley wear one off his face a week ago and thankfully was able to pop back up. Whelan. First baseman, got out of the way of that one and Darius McLeod aboard Barless. with a two out single and Darius Barless will look to patiently wait as Jeff McLeod is gonna be hooked from this game for Ashton Patterson. Patterson, the young Silver Creek slash Royal with a ton of speed and will be looking to get himself at least 90 feet closer to home here. Cabral staring down the young Patterson from the mound to first base as Barless resets his gloves and now steps back in and squares up here. Anxious moments here at Hastings Stadium. Went in there for a strike to get Barless's fourth at bat underway. He is 0 for 2 with a walk. One of those many base runners left stranded. Barless left at third back in the second inning. Patterson read that one all the way from Cabral and maybe just a check to throw over and Patterson back well in time. Patterson's got speed, but you gotta be careful here. 
We haven't seen Cabral's move, a, a decent move over the first anyways yet, so. And that is strike number two on Barlos, who has yet to swing the bat against Cabral. Still holding him on, even with two strikes here. And Barlos goes down swinging. Yep, and that is a strikeout for Cabral, and that leaves Ashton Patterson stranded at first through seven innings. The Royals have left nine aboard, and we are tied 4-4. Cleveland Brownlee to lead it off for the majors here in the top of the eighth inning. Claudio Custodio remains in this game for the Royals, who have yet to been able to give him enough run support after what has been a fantastic outing from their ace. Aside from that, top of the third where him and his teammates all collectively allowed four runs as Brownlee takes a healthy hack at that one and misses for strike number one. And the book on Brownlee is to stay away from that old number one pitch and throw him breaking balls and off-speed balls, and that seems to be the book that Claudio Custodio is reading right now. It's definitely turning into a Bible more and more here as this goes on. Yeah, Brownlee two wild hacks in the first two pitches of this at bat, so Claudio looking good here. We would love nothing more than a three-pitch strikeout on the major's designated hitter. That one framed up by Keys, but not well enough to sell it. One and two. Brownlee well, swings and misses, swing, and Keys throws down to Barless at first for the strikeout put out. One away here. It's a huge out here if you're the Royals anyways. It's one of the better bats in the majors lineup off the off the list for a couple of innings anyways. And now Robert Mullen, one of those other better at bats, coming to the Robert plate again Mullen. for the majors. So again, doesn't get much easier with Brownlee down. Mullen up next and Sterling Joseph will follow to round out the three majors that are due up this inning. Mullen fouls that one off for a strike. Mullen one for three. He's struck out swinging. He doubled and scored two RBIs and flew out in foul territory to Brandon LaRue in the fifth. The 0-1 swung on by Mullen. Cush can't haul it in. Throws it over to Barless. Great in time for out number two. 
That one was a lot closer than it should have been, but Barless was able to make the catch and keep his foot on the bag to record the second out of the inning. And here comes Starling Joseph yet again. The right fielder number seven, Starling Joseph. Joseph one for three, came into the game batting 329. Single to the second inning, reached on base on a fielder's choice, but got caught stealing. That one's going to get through the hole here. And Joseph's aboard here with two away. And that is the last guy you want on base for the majors right now with two away. And to follow him now is Gibson Kremensky, who is 0 for 2 Third with a walk. Number 19, Gibson Kremensky. Rescue with Harris strikeouts and a walk so far. Joseph takes his lead over at first base, and it's an aggressive one. Custodio checks, delivers to home plate, and that is framed perfectly by Keys for strike number one. The you know, one coming from Custodio in there for strike two. Custodio at 113 pitches now. 70 strikes, 43 balls. And would love nothing more to get out of this inning at 114 pitches. Delivers. Swung on back up the middle and catches him in the leg, but Claudio with time. Three. Tis but a flesh wound, as he's saying, when Keys comes off. And now in line to potentially get the win is Custodio as we are off to the bottom of the eighth inning in a tie ball game.
We are back at Hastings Stadium. Fernando Fernandez into the game for the London Majors. And a big shout out to Natasha Fuller, who is one of our most important viewers, taking in the broadcast from home here, rooting on the Royals for a big win here as Kyle Cush makes his way back to the plate for the fourth time this evening. He is one for three with a run scored and would love nothing more than break this tie to start the eighth inning in the bottom half of it at least. That's in there. Fernandez's first pitch of the game is a strike to get ahead of Cush, 0-1. The Majors have got four runs on six hits, no errors to this point. The Royals 4-10-1 with a small village stranded. That one misses to even the count at 1-1. One and one. As the clock approaches 10.30, so with nine outs left to go, we are seven minutes away from a three-hour game. Cush pops one high to center field, but not nearly deep enough. Austin Wilkie underneath it to make the catch for out number one. And Brando LaRue back to the plate now. LaRue one for two with a double and an RBI. It's also walked and scored a run. Would nothing, like nothing more than to be a spark plug here for the Royals here in the eighth inning. LaRue looking to stir the drink here as Neil mentioned and swings and misses at the first pitch he sees from Fernandez for strike number one. The 0-1 coming, LaRue swings at it and slices it down the first baseline and well foul. 0-2, J.D. Williams will bat next. which would be his fifth at bat of the evening. It's almost the same script as it was Sunday in Toronto. Claudio Custodio goes eight innings again. Not we sure feel like. Not sure if he's coming out for the ninth or not here, but. Naru gets a hold of that one. It could be trouble, and Wilkie makes that look easy for out number two as he had his eye on that ball all the way. J.D. Williams back to the plate now. Two for four with two strikeouts. Single and a double, so J.D. will look to get to Fernandez, who is a former Royal in his own right here. In the top of the order, looking to put their imprint on this ball game for the Royals. It's been all the middle part and lower half, or lower third of the Royals lineup that's done all the damage so far. JD lays off that one and takes ball number one. So yeah, as Neil mentioned, Custodio thrown 114 pitches and much similar to Sunday night's game. Could be done now, but we'll see what happens after this half inning is over and for a third straight batter. That one popped up to shallow center and that caught made, catch made and that brings the eighth inning to a quiet close here. We're off to the ninth, tied 4-4 at Hastings Stadium.
Top of nine in a tie ball game. Keith Candell to lead it off for the London Majors. But of note, the newest Rolf Royal enters the game on the mound. The former Blue Jay, Andrew Case, into the game here in relief of Claudio Custodio, who pitched eight solid innings. Case made his debut back on Thursday night for the Royals, pitching an inning, and will look to sit down three in a row and put himself in line for his first IBL win here tonight. First pitch that Candell sees is a ball. This has just been high and inside a little bit. Some good zip on it though. That one in there for a strike and you can just hear the pop of the glove of Brendan Keyes behind home plate. Case made it all the way up to AAA as the closer. He was with the Vancouver Canadians as well. And like so many before him, then finds himself here in the IVL and will be an effective hand here in the bullpen for Dino Ramel's team. That one pulled hard by Candell, and that's the thing about a hard-throwing pitcher. He broke the bat on that one. <laughs> it absolutely did. But as fast as it comes in, it comes out even faster if they're able to get on it on time. And Candell was just a hair ahead of that case pitch there. Have to apply a little stick tack to the the bat handle here, so it doesn't slip out of his hands. So he's gone to his second piece of lumber. A little wax, a little something else. So I'm not sure what down there. As Candell is now ready to go with his brand new piece of equipment in his hands, and unfortunately with a broken bat there's no such thing as fixing it so it is firewood no nope, it is firewood now or a souvenir for some lucky fan out there this case delivers the 2-2 swung on and missed candell down on strikes And now Drew Lawrence, who came into this game to pinch run for Dampere, is back Number to the plate. Drew Lawrence. And by back to the plate, I believe this is his first plate appearance. You are correct, sir. Lawrence, of course, the player of the month in June, or actually, sorry, May, for the majors and the IBL as well. Let's go over in left field here as he bunts this one right back to Case. Case, Case will step and right throw. away. Little PFP, pitcher's fielding practice, paying off here for Case. And the Royals have got two away. Yeah, unfortunately for Lawrence there, that one just dribbled its way right into the glove of the Royals pitcher and couldn't have been easier for Case well, in the second out of this Phil inning. Whalen. And Phil Whalen, the nine hitter now, back to the plate. And he's done a pretty good job here so far. He did reach by air and by way of walk. Struck out as well, so this is his fourth plate appearance. Case misses on that one for ball number one. Looks like the release point was just slightly off that one. It kind of drifted too far out of the strike zone. That one missed low. Sometimes you just one, don't get the calls back there. Yeah, that one misses somewhere and is now ball number two. Is a bit of a rowdy fan down behind the Royals dugout, drawing some attention. Whalen hits it high and not nearly deep enough. Ethan Hammond underneath it. Makes the catch for out number three. We are off to the bottom of the ninth inning for the Royals with a chance to...
Tied 4-4 in the bottom of the ninth. Connor Morrow will lead it off for the Royals. Ethan Hammond and Malik Collymore also do up in every single Royals fan on their feet. Sold out crowd seats are empty. Morrow takes ball one low to get ahead in the count. You gotta have a look around the infield here. The majors are playing way behind the bases again here. If Morrow wanted to, he could probably leg one out, drop it down one of the side baselines here. The 1 0 coming. Morrow takes it inside for a 2 and 0 count now. And we mentioned it in the last half inning, or in the bottom of the eighth, excuse me. The top of the order has been fairly silent in terms of producing any sort of runs, so no time like the present. Morrow takes ball, strike one. And borderline strike one called, and the count now two and one, and much to the chagrin again of the volunteer umpires in the Hastings crowd. The 2-1 coming. Morrow hammers it. Pulls one down the left field line and that'll be a base hit. Jogging 90 feet to first base and is in there safely. And Ethan Hammond now with no one gone and Morrow aboard makes his way back to the plate for his fifth at bat of the evening. He is one for three, a pair of strikeouts, a single and a walk. Malik Collymore is next. I feel the Royals a little patience at the plate here. Make Fernando just throw strikes. Hammond lays off and that one misses and a favorable ball number one called. Third baseman's even in even with the bag. The first baseman's holding on. Morrow at first. So if Morrow, sorry, if Hammond could put it down the first baseline here. Could be trouble for the majors. That one gets away from Mullen as he tried to make a quick transfer, but the veteran catcher pops right up and gets on top of the baseball and Morrow stays put at first. Count now 2-0 and yet again. Fernandez requests another baseball out here. I don't blame him. That one pops away from Mullen and skirts into the dirt. Probably got some more grass stains on it. It's the 2-0 coming, the crowd getting back into it again as the Royals with a real chance to walk one off here. Hammond takes ball three. I think you gotta see a strike here. I would completely agree, Neil. I think Fernandez has struggled so far in this bottom of the ninth and Ethan Hammond has yet to see a strike from him, so don't bail him out here. And that is a four pitch walk from the left fielder who removes his protective padding and Morrow raises his bat that down that and slow, walks slow 90 feet to, to first second base. base here. It's like he's going reverse. <laughs> so runners at first and second, no one gone. Malik Collymore who We'd love to bring some of that magic from Thursday night into this ball game right about now. Infield's got to come in. The outfield's got to play deep enough they don't get anything behind him here. As Fernandez is in a whole world of trouble right about now. Calling more checks. Does not go around. That is another ball. So five straight balls thrown from Fernandez. Collymore will probably wait for Fernandez to throw a strike here. Although Malik not incapable of muscling one out. And again, Fernandez misses. Two and oh, two men on, no one gone, tie game bottom ninth. Rose got a freeze on a line drive. Make sure it comes down before they go. Collymore slices that one 
foul behind home plate and just, just missed that. Collie Moore getting encouragement from the Royals fans here. Two and one the count after that foul ball. Swings and comes out of his boots on strike number two. Got to remind himself here, a single probably gets the job done here. His moral runs pretty well. Doesn't have to kill the baseball. That would be nice, too. A single could win it, depending on where it ends up. But yes, absolutely. Contact is priority number one. Here for Collie Moore, who fouls that one off down the right field line. And we will do it again. Two on, the 2-2 two -two count from Malik Collymore looking to end this ball game. Fernandez deals, Collymore pulls it, foul. Just ahead of that one, and we'll do it again. And again, more anxious moments. This game has so much on the line with both of these teams, just half a game apart in the standings. Claymore swings and hits one deep to left field. Goodbye, baseball. He pulls it out of the field. A walk-off shot from Malik Collymore. That's for the boys at Station 415 in Toronto. <laughs> oh, there goes the Gatorade. I don't think Malik he'll care. Collymore does it again. Malik Collymore, the hero. Connor Morrow scores the winning run, and the Royals win. What a thriller. And that will do it for our broadcast this evening. The Royals win yet again on home field. We will be back home next Saturday night. Against Bramford, those pesky Red Sox picked up their first win of the season earlier in the week. They will try to do it again as we take a break and say thank you for watching and good night from Hastings Stadium.